Alan Hovnanian. And what country are you from? I'm from France. And with which organization? In fact, I have uh, multiple um, uh, affiliations. One of them is uh, Necker Hospital for Sick Children, but I'm also affiliated to, with the Imagine Institute for Genetic Disease and also uh, at uh, the INSERM, which is the National Institute for Medical Research. And all these three uh, institutions are based in uh, Paris. Um, is there any particular message that you want to announce? Yes, certainly. And that was the subject of um, uh, my presentation in this Congress. So we were very happy to announce the enrollment of uh, the first uh, patient with recessive dystrophic EB in a clinical trial, which is a, a gene therapy clinical trial, which we have been working on for the last 15 years. And uh, um, we've been able to enroll and to take a skin biopsy from this patient. And his cells are currently being uh, uh, cultured uh, in a production uh, platform, which is based in Madrid, in fact. And the plans are to uh, graft this patient with 300 square centimeters of his own genetically corrected skin using two major uh, variations of what, what has been performed so far. The first one is uh, we're going to graft not only uh, his genetically corrected epithelial uh, sheets, but we will, we're going to graft what we call a composite skin, which will be made of not only his genetically corrected epidermis, but also his uh, um, genetically corrected fibroblasts, which are the main cells of the dermis, which will be grown into um, a, a dermal substitute based uh, on uh, fibrin. So all this is autologous, except the fibrin gel. And we, why are we making this system more complex than the existing one? Is because in the specific case of recessive dystrophic EB, both the keratinocytes and fibroblasts contribute to the disease uh, pathogenesis. So not only they produce locally and they secrete type 7 collagen to form anchoring fibers, but also the fibroblasts contribute, unfortunately, to the production of a very fibrotic dermis, which, uh, with, in which we know that biological pathways are activated and which um, uh, send um, uh, deleterious signals to the epidermis and which lead to the uh, development of severe skin cancer. So by um, introducing uh, genetically corrected autologous fibroblast into this uh, skin composite, not only we hope to, uh, we will restore dermal epidermal adhesion, no, no more blistering, no more erosions, but we, will, we should significantly improve and reduce the fibrosis, skin inflammation, and prevent the development of skin cancers. It is, this is why for us, it's a very important uh, achievement, and we, we do hope that the first results will be uh, as we expect. So this Congress really means something to you? Very much, very much, because it was uh, the first time I was announcing that we've been able to enroll the first patient, because I've often presented this, pre this subject saying that we we're still uh, waiting for a final agreement from the national regulatory agencies, and you know that these institutions it seems as if they have a different uh, timing. I mean, they always they are slow to respond. Oh, you should cut this. <laughs> but um, they, it's it's very difficult to to make them understand that really we should have this uh, authorization as quickly as possible because it's very very important for the patients to be treated soon. So it took us more than a year and a half to get all this authorization. But now that we've got them, we, we could open the clinical site. We could uh, invite the first patient who we had identified for many years ago. And he was very, very uh, eager to, to, to take part in this clinical trial. So everything is happening now. And, uh, but we know that everything is going to be will have to be very, very precisely thought because it's a first, the first time this type of approach, which is quite complex, is being undertaken. That leads me into, so what are the biggest obstacles that you, that EB researchers like yourself are facing? Um, the big obstacles are um, 
sometimes on the scientific part or the technical part. And uh, the other type of uh, obstacles are, as I said, the, the lack of understanding of the regulatory agencies to help us to bring these projects to the clinic as quickly as possible. There should be like there is, a, I think, in the, in the States, uh, a specific uh, pathway, uh, a, tra a fast track a system which should, in in in, on the contrary, facilitate this type of project. And uh, I wish the European Medical Agency would be aware, like the FDA is, of how, uh, how uh, um, dramatic the disease is and how high the medical needs are. Do you think this um, global collaboration that we have has been beneficial? Absolutely. I think this is really the, the best way to go. And I think it's the first time that I've, um, I've seen and I've felt so much willingness from the scientists and from the um, uh, donators and from the industry to collaborate and to move forward. Maybe this is because uh, everything is, everybody is understanding that the, the field is, uh, is, is going faster and faster and we are really living a, a very specific uh, 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 period in which several different uh, clinical trials are currently being done. Several phase three uh, clinical trials are, are being um, undertaken, which, re which is really... Uh, showing that uh, the field is moving the right direction. And uh, what message would you like to send to the EB community? I think that the EB patients and their family should keep hope because things are really moving fast in the right way and we have many um, different options which probably will be combined so that the, the treatment will be uh, a precision medicine. We will try to address specifically uh, each um, particular aspect of the disease for each uh, person uh, e e using either cell therapy, gene therapy, protein replacement, drugs, small compounds. All those could be uh, specifically chosen and combined to, to address the, the patient problem and, and to consider that it's obvious for everybody that uh, EB is not only a, a disease of the skin, it's also a systemic disease, which is involving a lot of inflammation, a lot of fibrosis, sclerosis, and also involving the, the mucosal uh, surfaces. Um, so what do you think we should be using as a way of measuring whether EB patients are getting better during clinical studies? Oh, I think um, the... Uh, the first um, uh, outcome should be obviously clinical outcome. Mm -hmm. I think um, uh, the extent of, of the erosions and the occurrence of blisters could, uh, should be one, one of these outcomes. Skin the level of skin inflammation would be, could be one of them also. Uh, pruritus and pain are major outcomes also. And, but all those are related because when a, a patient uh, uh, scratches his skin or her skin, he will uh, induce uh, blisters and erosion. So we, the, the aim really of these clinical trials are to, to shut down um, all these um, uh, deleterious consequences of, the, of lack of, um, of type 7 collagen and the defective gene. Yeah. Thank you.